if any external military would come to aggress, they will support Niger. What does that portend? And most importantly, to what do we really attribute this more like very recent rising tide of coup d'etat in African countries? All right. <laughs> we have a political scientist here in the house who would, you know, help us break that up because it's, it's actually a very serious matter. And especially it's deeper than you think. Countries. countries. <laughs> who told you it may not spill over to English speaking countries? Is it because it's Francophone? All right, Lagos. My name is Precious, as I said. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back to uh, dig into all of these conversations one at a time. Stay with us. Are you aware that Iruka Online Limited installed and designed a 100,000 capacity church building? Oh yeah, we are the sole distributors of global leading brands all over the world, such as Wafday Line Array, speakers and digital amplifiers, Presenos Digital Mixers and Studio Equipment, Coswell Workstations and Keyboards, Fender Guitars, Mapex Drums, Ashdown Bass Combos, just to mention but a few. We offer flexible payment plan handled by our financial department with 20 Four seven customer care support system. You can visit our website on www.iroka.com to avoid buying fake products. You can also visit our showroom at number 36, Lagos International Airport Road, beside Golden Tulip Hotel. Iruka, never set for less. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Yeah, we'll be TV. We have been serving you hot and fresh content on radio and you have been loving it. Now we're taking it further. Mm. Catch us live on YouTube at BOP TV for all the juicy content you can't resist. Talk shows, exclusive interviews, news, lifestyle and more. It's all about you. BOP TV, show up, speak up. The award-winning pizza in the U.S. is now here in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Romeo, the pizza champion, and cold berry ice cream. Delights in every scope. Visit any of our outlets and feel the rich taste from the pizza champion and cold berry ice cream at 11 Road by First Avenue, First Town, 28 at Denira Ogusanya Street, Suruliri, 13 at Marilty Way, Lucky Face One. Romeo's Pizza and cold berry ice cream. Romeo, the pizza champion. <laughs> Evening Rush with Pressures. Featuring sound and informed guests across various sectors that discuss matters arising on hot topic parties. What was the rate of inflation and demi? What was the exchange rate? Intense conversations. Critical analysis. What is wrong with those 200 million people? We can't even give ourselves. We sometimes disagree. When we say our GDP is not an oil dominated. To agree. On Hot Topic Pali, Monday to Friday, 6 15 pm to 9 pm, 90.3. Voice of the People FM. Lagos. Now you have a voice. Lagos, you are welcome back. It is 90.3, Voice of the People FM. Um, all right, so before one on break, we brought the, you know, uh, we kind of introduced some of the hot topics that we have for today to you, right? Uh, let's look at them. Some of them will just, you know, skim through very quickly so that we'll pay better attention to our big story for the day, and which is, you know, very important to us. So, uh, yes, we did tell you that, um, uh, um, <laughs> okay, Nigerians have begun a warm up or more like a warm up protest in Kano State over the hike in petrol price from 195 naira to 615 naira uh, devaluation. School fees, increment, and other anti-poor policies of the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu's Nigerian government. All right, so, yeah, so there's a protest going on in um, uh, Kano State. And, of course, all your state, too, same thing, as all your state workers and pensioners today blocks the entrances 
to the state secretariat at Agodi, uh, Agodi that's what they call it, Abi, Agodi Ibadan, uh, demanding palliatives on upward review of pension allowances and payment of salary deductions, among others. Mm. Okay, that's it. Now, remember that NLC had announced that come 2nd of August, they will be embarking on strike, you know, because of, of course, the hardship that is, of course, occasioned by the hike in the price of fuel or the removal of fuel subsidy and, you know, other policies of the government. But Northern CSUs have pulled out of the NLC strike. So we're talking about, you know, this is less than for, for 24 hours to the Wednesday planned nationwide strike and mass protests by the Liberal uh, Congress, 16 Northern-based civil society groups under the issues of coalition of various civil society organizations have pulled out on the grounds that the indefinite strike action will damage the fragile economy of co and cause more hardship to the ordinary citizens. So they're saying that, you know what? You know what? Even though we're also suffering it, you know what? We don't want to be part of the strike because we understand that it will further cripple the economy of the country. I mean, the economy is already weak, Congo. So we cannot come and wound it more. Isn't that patriotic? <laughs> yeah, very patriotic. And then just very quickly, uh, Senator, uh, Senate President Goswil Apabi also said salaries of members of the National Assembly, that is not even enough for them to take care of their demands from their constituents. It's not even enough. Even them now, their own salary is not enough. And we're not going on strike. You, you people, you push me coming down. Why do people want to go on strike? Well, all of this that we have for you today. Do, am, I, am I missing out on anything? And then, uh, yeah, I also did tell you that Tinubu, uh, that Ipman is saying that President Bolame Tinubu is not interested in revamping Nigeria's refineries and nation's economy. I didn't say it. Ipman says that. Just in case you're wondering who Ipman is, is the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman. They have opined that President Bolame Tinubu has not shown much interest in revamping the nation's refineries into its production state, adding that the president is seeking to apply wrong solutions in addressing the myriad of economic challenges facing the country. Hmm. And the Nigerian Labour Congress has expressed concern over Bola Tenubu's promises to dispense wage awards to workers following the petrol subsidy removal, describing the Nigerian leader's national broadcast as a sign of hypocrisy. Hmm. And also hmm. President George Joe said this in a statement while reacting to Mr. Chinibu's national speech on Tuesday. You know, the president addressed the people last night, right? By 7 p.m. Hmm. Hmm. So you'd also recall that perhaps all, all, all would have led to that is because I hear that so many banks, they've been taking turns. So banks have been increasing salaries of their people, yeah, yeah. you know, one by one. So, and then of course, the president has been commending them that well done as you're increasing the salaries, they're good. Okay, so you're, you're praising people for increasing salaries, but people that are working under you, how far? Get them like how far? You've not looked into it, right? Okay, so um, whilst that is underway, we are looking at what is happening right now in Niger Republic. We did tell you last week that uh, uh, President Bazoum's um, President Bazoum of uh, Niger Republic's government was toppled by the military last week, and uh, just as we were saying that, as at, on Monday we did hear that ECOWAS has sanctioned Niger Republic, right? And um, they are also threatening some military intervention of some sort, you know, apart from the sanctions. Or if they do not um, um, they replace, an exactly, right? if they do not, if they, if they do not, you know, bring, get back into democracy and, of course, put back the man who won election in power, that, you know, uh, there will be other um, intervention measures. And a lot of people have been worried about that. Um, so I, I don't want to go straight to all of those sanctions, but I have um, Dr. DG Omoshala here in the house. Dr. DG is a doctor of political science, and I don't have any better person to discuss this conversation with because I mean, he's a person who will go study political science so to get doctorate degree inside. You know, so the person's ability in well, well. So, Dr. DG, welcome. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank, Thank you for having me. Ah, Dr. DG, I don't like the look on your face, but it's okay. I know that this conversation was still be interesting. Thank you. So, um, we are worried. There has been lots of advice from every corner of the world about. Oh, Nigeria should be careful towards your contribution in military intervention of any sort against Nigeria Republic. Considering that Nigeria borders region, I mean, about nine, six states of Nigeria borders Nigeria Republic, and that may be a problem for Nigeria. But first of all, I like I like you to break the whole scenario down to the layman who does not even know what's happening in Africa right now. 
and let's even understand what probably do you think led to this toppling of Bazoum's government and then you know now the military and then the ECOWAS sanctions and the reactions that followed. There are lots of reactions that have followed, so we'll get to them back. But I'd like you to help us chronicle this. Well, um, across Africa, uh, it is audible to the deaf and visible to the blind that Africa is the least developed continent in the world, despite being rich in human and natural resources. Now, and democracy is supposed to bring development so says the proponent of democracy but the democracy in africa you know um, african leaders have created a brand of democracy which you can call um militarized or autocratic democracy mm. in the sense that you hold on to power by hook or by crook and you want to perpetuate yourself in power now, if you are perpetuating yourself in power, like the case of Russia, Putin has been leading um, Erdogan in Turkey, mm -hmm. and there is this development that is coming along with it, mm -hmm. then the people that you are leading will be kind of like, okay, see that as some form of succum. So, so, so just, just, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry okay. to probably take you on that very quickly. Are you saying that the reason why um, the Turkish and but perhaps um, uh, the Russians will tolerate those two leaders for this long is because they also see that their lives are better for it one way or the other. You see... Um, That's why it like, can be tolerated. Yes. And when your personal belief or ideology as a leader, if you present it as a national interest and it resonates with the people, it aligns with that of the people, for example, Putin will go historical and okay. talked about how the legacy of the Soviet Union needs, still needs to be kept intact. Hmm. And now, coming from that cultural ideological perspective, now the people of Russia will believe that, yeah, um, it shouldn't be all about the West. And why should a nation like Ukraine be thinking of um, aligning with the West? when they should traditionally still stick stay, to their brothers stick to their brothers under the soviet union mm. so putin's idea resonates with that of the people but in africa as i was saying earlier on the lead the the um leadership goal does not resonate with the interests and needs of the people anyway. now african leaders want power they want to perpetuate themselves in power. You ask yourself, to what end? For what purpose? If you look at a section of African countries, you would see that they failed to meet the needs of the people. Rather, it's more like aligning with the Western interests and their cronies. For example, what is the excuse for Nigerian shell discovered oil in Nigeria in 1958? This is 2023. Why? The, does Shell not have a functional refinery in, in Nigeria. Nigeria? So you'd see that African and leaders be drilling yes, oil from Nigeria, all and they be drilling oil from Nigeria. So you begin to wonder that okay, if Shell doesn't have a functional refinery in Nigeria, and Nigerian government itself have failed to create a functional refinery, who does this largely benefit? The Western nations. And Shell itself, because Shell, we buy raw, raw material, the raw crude. We buy it from us at, you know, um, a cheap rate, take it to the Western world, refine it, sell it to us as finished good. Now, for the benefit of our listeners, you know, um, we think maybe um, I'm speaking... Um, Please, if you can speak pidgin English, and you won't break it down, You see, if... Let me use cocoa, for example. Mm. Cocoa and um, this popular beverage, you mm -hmm. know, um, I don't want to advertise. I don't it know. It's okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any, nah. Anything you drink, like, you know, the, the okay, chocolate. Nah. Okay. Okay. Hot chocolate. Okay. Nah. Hot okay. chocolate. Yeah. Okay. If you are to buy cocoa hmm. from the cocoa farmer, mm -hmm. no matter the stress that the cocoa farmer has gone through, or if you are to buy orange, for example, from those at the farm, you buy it, lads, less to nothing, because at that stage, mm. that orange has no major value. Because it's in its raw state. Yes, it's in its raw state. 
But when that orange is transformed into orange juice, Oi. it has value because why? It has gained the interest of a particular class in the society, which is the elite. Mm. And in the case of oil, it has moved from quick yes, to plantain yes, chips. Yes, yes. And and in the case of oil, you will see that this commodity connects. It's like an oxygen in nose reel. There's no way your life is not connected to crude oil because you either have a car mm. or you either transport yourself or the goods that you are consuming, the it's company it's that is producing it are using mm. petrol or diesel. So oil is like an oxygen in nose reel to Nigeria. It's, that it's, has still, a still remains, economy. still remains the highest source of energy. Exactly. So if you not look at it across Africa, I haven't set that background. African leaders have not been able to meet up with the interest of the people they are governing. Now, let me cross over to Asia. Most of the NICs, the newly industrialized countries are in Asia. We have the Malaysia, the Singapore. The you know, Malaysia. you know, when, when you said yeah. that, I'm feeling a bit bad because I do remember that just just around 2014, 2015, Nigeria was still supposed to be part of those those we were already growing alongside those newly newly industrialized countries. You see. So what happened to us? Why did we backslide? Leadership plays a key role. It is difficult for a nation to develop beyond the thinking of its leaders, most especially with the kind of democracy we have whereby the legislature is weak, the um, each, each institution is weak, they look at the body language or the dictate of the president. So it is difficult for a nation. The reason why Nigeria is like this is under Buhari, what the man believes is to share money. That's his own idea, you know, tax and borrow. He has no other idea of earning, well, earning income for Nigeria. Or That's why, as an problems. academic, if I'm to rate, the Buhari presidency, I'll rate him fail. You know why? why? Now, he said economy, security, and um, one other thing. It's um, three point agenda economy, security, and ah, um, corruption. One, no, corruption. Fight corruption. Mm. Yeah. Cor Cor fighting you know? corruption was like the major, yes. thing. Well, the major thing. Now, out of that three, if I'm to reduce this to one, I will pick the constituency he comes from. For example, if I'm to rate you on anything, you know, if it's if if there's anything relating to the media there, that's why I will frustrate you. And if I'm to base anything, I'll be like, okay, um, um uh, Madam Yan, um, pretty precious. Uh, apologies to your listeners. Oh, yeah, they are, they, they, <laughs> or you know, all right, result for them. Yeah. <laughs> so if I'm to do any kind of rating, mm -hmm. then I have to go to the media. That okay, precious has 20 years experience in the media then what's happening? So if I'm to rate Buhari on one single thing, I will rate him on security because that is his primary constituency. It mm -hmm. is believed mm -hmm. that Buhari will be more intelligent than any other person. Mm. But if somebody that is supposed to be intelligent, you see, Nigeria itself, we've done things that we could have been entrapped in crew, but God has been so gracious to us. Because if you have a multi-ethnic nation like Nigeria, and you begin to appoint head of DSS, army, police, and all, all that military from your own ethnic tribe, and we have over 250. So what are we saying? So if you look at Africa, power and the democracy, the autocratic democracy we have, has basically served the interest of the microscopic few. The ruling elite have been the ones benefiting from what we call democracy now autocratic democracy we so have because at the end of the day the will of the people we supposed to be the bedrock of who imagine a democratic system plays little or no role in who becomes a leader in other words african leaders try to perpetuate themselves in power by extending their tenure which um, um the former president Olusha Gobaso also tried to do you know um, at his own time and when they successfully do it based on weak legislature, we also have you know, um, weak police system and weak electoral system to make their dream come true. So what you have is disgruntled citizens. Now, that disgruntled citizens is now mixed with a dissatisfied military. Mm. In other words, you see, if you are a military man, mm. it is assumed that by the virtue of your job, you know you can die anytime. But the truth is, no military, when you are signing that you, you are ready to give up your life 
for the country. You are ready to give up your life for the country under some certain, um, let's say, if they are unusual circumstance. No military man signed to go and die stupidly. Military man served to die with integrity and honor. So if you see African leaders with their 10 yards sadbada, looting, embezzling, living life of luxury, giving dictates to mili top military hierarchies as if they are Iran boys, as we allegedly witnessed under the Ekiti election during the fire share era, the famous, you know, um, leaked tape. Hmm. If you have that kind of situation, whereby there are news of corruption, there are videos and clips of you, your friends, and your family as a leader living life of affluence. The people are walloping in penury further, and you now have a disgruntled military, whereby the military are not taken care of. If I'm to use, I think um, it is the word of Idris Abdul Karim. You know, in this case, it's not arm robber. It's which military not like money? Which military not like to jolly? You know, even political military like to enjoy. Because Idris said, na political arm robber. A political I, military I in this case, you know, like to enjoy. So, you now have a disgruntled military. And these military boys knows that they are just one step away from power. You know, there's a power behind you being in possession of firearms and you are hungry and you are dissatisfied and you are in possession of arms and ammunition. Mm -hmm. Coupled with you knowing that as it is in Niger, you have that if this thing happens, the citizens will come out and rejoice because they are already suffocated by poverty, um, anti masses policies, and you know this um um this neo-colonial trait now i've talked about the military i've talked about um autocratic democracy i've talked about um the um dissatisfied citizens now let us now go to the global stage and look at it if you look at the scramble and partition of africa you know now, after that, there is this, um, the, all these Western means of exploiting Africa. African nations had independence. When Africa had independence, first generation of leaders, they have this um, desire, this enthusiasm to have a developed continent. They have a choice to either tread the way of the Asian nations whereby they should do away with anything Western. That's why if you go to Malaysia today, you see that majority of them can't speak good English, despite the fact that they were colonized by the British. Why? After independence, the leaders got angry. They, 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 they tried to do away with as much Western penetration that has been in their system as much as possible. But African leaders, they maintain the territory so given to us by the um, Western colonizers, which, for example, Nigeria, Lord Lugard, and all that, 1940 amalgamation. And when independence came, other leaders got afraid when they saw what happened to Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana. And I employ our leaders to go and read about, you know, some of these um, leaders. Sankara, you know, um, Senghor. Some of these African leaders that either their military or their friends were used, were funded by Western interests to either execute them, plan coup against them, or perpetually remove they and their allies that are Pan-African in orientation from power. So that sends jitters down the spine of other African leaders who chicken out and try to be a good boy to the West. So, so, so in all so, of these that you're seeing, uh, we, we, we're up for a quick break, but okay. I'd like you to answer to this question when we come back from break. What has made it so difficult for African leaders to actually be accountable to their people, one, and what has made it very difficult, more so, for African leaders to actually show good governance? 
Because, I mean, from all the stories that we've read out today now, for instance, Ipman is saying that, or accusing President Bonam Metinubu, that he doesn't even have interest in building refineries in Nigeria or rehabilitating the refineries that we have. Neither does he have any interest in, you know, taking anything that's got to do with the growth of the economy serious. And you wonder why a body like that would want to accuse your president. And then you have other cases where a lot of people are frustrated and they're, you know, protesting and they're worried. So why is it so difficult for African leaders to do things that would, you know, alleviate the pains and sufferings or poverty of their people? I'd I I like you to respond to that, but quickly, let's, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back, Lagos. Stay with us. This is the Amy Rush. You are listening to your the, the, number, the number one station. The Voice of the People 90.3 FM. Do not touch that dial. It's midnight. You're on an important call. Suddenly you hear. You have one minute remaining. You quickly check your wallet. <laughs> and there's no cash. <laughs> what if you could recharge without cash and even get some bonus? Low on credit? No problem. Recharge your MTN line by downloading my MTN NG app or dial star 904 hash to buy airtime directly from your bank account anytime, any day and enjoy a 15% bonus on every recharge. Yes, it's that easy. MTN, what are we doing today? Voice of the People, 90.3 FM. Lakers, you are welcome back. It's still 90.3 Voice of the People FM. So before one break, we've been speaking with uh, Dr. DG Omoshola, uh, uh, Doctor of Political Science, and we have been dissecting leadership in Africa generally. Of course, with the case study of Nigeria, our home country, where we come from. Now, we'll be looking at, you know, the rise or incessant rising coup d'etats in Africa recently. And then the latest being that of Niger Republic. And, of course, that led to the toppling of uh, President Bazoum's government. And, you know, all of that. So, we've been asking quite a lot of questions. Uh, Dr. Digi, before I did ask that question, uh, you had something you were saying. I'd like you to land on that and then please answer my question. Okay. Yeah, I'm well, quickly on the aspect of global politics that you know um inspired this coup d'etat so when the um first generation of leaders when kwame Nkuruma and you know other leaders suffered that forceful removal from office other african leaders begin to align with western interests so that they don't suffer the same fate that's why you see that most um francophone countries align with france most anglophone mm, countries align with the uk mm. you know so that has persisted for long and because but is there not still some form of colonialism going yes, on there because these western nations have insatiable taste you know when you are doing something over time you've been exploiting people over time over time you know you get used to it there's something in you that you that, that happens that when you don't exploit you don't feel comfortable so the western nations haven't been able to reroll those leaders began this indirect exploitation. One of it is, for example, Shell is a British Holland um, company mm. and Shell does not have refinery in Nigeria. And Nigerian government have not been able to say, Pim, imagine, in your own country, your resources. Not only Shell, we have Ajib, you know, we have Shell, Chevron, Ajib, we Chevron, have Total, which is know, a French company. Total. So we have so them. many of them. And they don't have this refinery and nothing has happened. Rather than you, to be bold enough, like all these NICs, newly industrialized countries, to have taken drastic steps against these countries, you have left your citizens follow. Now, who suffers for it? So are you saying that what those other NICs, as you said, could actually hold them accountable and make them do what you want them to do? Mm -hmm. Like, yes. okay, if you're drilling at oil, exactly. one of the things you need to do is you have to have a working refinery in our country. I give an are you example. saying that that's part of what they may tell them to do? I give an example. Mm. When Shell got to Malaysia, the argument that they used to give that, oh, your people do not have the expertise that we need to work, to work with. with us. And Malaysian government said, okay, that's no problem. But all things being equal, 10 years should be good enough for, for you. them to learn. So in the next 10 years, let's agree that so, so, so quota of your expertise and working population will be Malaysians. That no matter the skill that they don't have 10 years is enough for, for them, them to learn the skills to have trained them and to make and they are mandating them to train them the skill hmm. 
So look at that. So the, the for example, the case of Nigeria and all these, you know, oil multinational. What has that led to? That has led to the inaction, what we call comprador relationship, you know, whereby um, if I can, I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit reluctant to go into some things because I'm afraid you'll cut me for want of time. Dr. J, you know, just go ahead. Because, okay, Since now, you already have it in now, your mouth. Now, now, if you look at the case of Kent Sarowiwa and you try to align it with what I call the comprador relationship between African ruling elite and Western multinationals, whereby your citizen is crying, protesting for what you see that it is glaring. And Despite that, you go the extra mile to execute the Ogoni Nine, Kensarowiwa and other eight, just to satisfy the interest of Shell. Look at that such unholy alliance against the interest of your people is what we call the comprador relationship. So, what has that comprador relationship brought for Africa? You see that all most African nations that have crucial natural resources go to DR Congo and the likes, there is conflict there because that comprador relationship has brought about environmental degradation as we are experiencing in the Niger Delta. It has brought about massive unemployment. If Shell had refinery in Nigeria, there will be direct or indirect um, employment. You're trying to bot in. Hey, you know, Dr. I'm, I'm, speaking about this comprador relationship, okay. um, the military leader in Niger said, I'm going to quote him, mm. we often located terrorists, but when we asked to the president, when we were asked to rush to kill them, the president Bazoum told us to ask permission from the French forces first. But our soldiers are falling on the front, and France did nothing. We decided to do the same thing as Mali and Burkina Faso. You know, that's why they decided to plan the coup. You understand? So now, why would the sitting president want to ask an independent state would want to take permission from another Western country? Before, Before you, you kill a terrorist, good question. Of security of insecurity in your in your state. Good question. I, I'm almost sees, I'm asking if that's the same reason why it's hard to no, fight, sees, fight back the in Nigeria. He sees non-aligning with the West hmm. as a greater risk of being removed from office than aligning with his people. This has to do with opportunity choice. You know, if you can use lame economics. And your people are that, dying. You see. That's that's one thing about African leaders, and that is why I'm scared that, for example, if the West, Africa as Nigeria is the role model for Africa because we have the resources, we have the population, and anywhere there is population, there lies the market. Anywhere there's people, there's money there. Of course. You know. Now, if the American government should by chance or fortune to their country have anything against our president as he does all these alleged jokes or something trust me nigeria is as good as finished because they will either prefer to bargain and milk nigeria dry and make the nigerian president their puppet that okay um can you do this for us do this do this do this. okay we'll protect your interest we would um secure your country we won't release this thing that we have against you and most african leaders because we see the our our, our perspectives of power is so crazy that most african leaders rather than to honorably resign and say oh they want to be there let me go let another person be there i cannot do this most African leaders would sign off their so, country. So, so, so now this whole, you know, a series of coup has become a lot of problems. So it's because it's as we know right now, the Central African Republic, first thing, uh, the president of the Central a African Republic is planning to change the constitution and also to give him a third term tenure extension. You know, first thing. And then we're also talking about um, not forgetting the case of Togo, where we have a particular, the Ayedema family that, you know, that has left that country for as long as you can remember. Cameroon, and then we're not even talking about Cameroon, our backyard here. That So what, what, okay, so if the lives of the citizens of this country were better for it, do you think that, you know, would be having this very incessant coup d'etat? That's the reason I asked that question because i came across a video recently where someone was saying that i mean 
it's okay to condemn for ECOWAS to condemn these schools, but are they also condemning the inactions of their fellow military and um, of their fellow leaders who, you know, by things that they omit to do or they don't do at all, you know, could cause to economic hardship of their people, you know, one way or the other. So why has it been so hard? That is taking me back to my question. Why has it been so bad for Africa to have true good representation? In terms of leadership well why is it very difficult thing why it is very difficult is you see the interest of the african leader the priority of interest every african leader whether he has a plan or does he have a plan want to get power first and after getting that power you see other countries there's no way they don't steal they steal across the world but when they are earning they sit down and like okay what do we do for our people let's push some things to them then let's keep some but the problem with african leaders is they want all for themselves so if you minus their interest the interest of their cronies their you know luxury lifestyle if you now minus the interest of the west insatiable taste for exploitation who will remain for the people Okay, so so now talking about this interest, I hate to tell this word, but it just seems more like true now. Aren't we truly a representative? I mean, aren't our leaders truly a representative of who we are? Because you talked about the Ogoni Nine and all of that. That same in the Niger Delta, which is where I'm from. Till today, I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. So, 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 okay, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, who would have thought that Kansaruwiwa died like that? And while he while he was being hanged, Abasha had the infantry to be sending our hard earned money abroad keeping it in foreign account and today we are still receiving a lot okay so going back to that same question that is why a lot of people will say oh africans or the leaders in africa are a representation of who they are because in those same niger delta regions that's where you have these same multinational companies use your own leaders against you in one way or the other i don't know this is not an assertion i mean i'm not saying this you know okay let's say allegedly use your own leaders against them let me allege now before they come for me because in that case you have a situation where for instance and a multinational company would instead of you know a money that is supposed to be used for you know to maintain environmental degradation or something they will hand it over to a particular chief chief or king or whoever in charge pockets and if that person pockets it what happens to the rest of the people so are those not, does it mean that any of uh, any African person who is in a position of authority, you know, just becomes one thing or the other? So does that not also mean that we are, our leaders are a representation of who we all are? Maybe just because the reason why you and I are talking is because we've not had the opportunity to, to be in leadership. Maybe you and I will also lead our own. Don't you think so? Because it's, it's making it look like we truly do not have people who truly have the, you know, mind of its people at heart in africa well, is that a major problem yes it is a africa? major problem and because you've mentioned that let me move to another point that contributes to it which is leadership priority for example um nigeria is yet to get his own link Kuan Yu of singapore if you look at the history of nigeria during the oil boom of 1970s when these nations were using the resources to develop their country what do we have we have um um, um retired general yakubu gongwon said nigeria's problem is not money it is how to spend it when your country doesn't have a functional railway system across board so africa has this leadership problem in terms of strategy priority and focus they have this shallow mindset. They can't see beyond their nose. They believe that life starts and ends, you know, among them. Whereas in Asia, for example, they are seeing the West kind of development in terms of infrastructure, in terms of education, national orientation as a model to which they should follow. But Africa leaders went to the back seat. They, re they relax. So the leadership priority contributed to, because imagine during the oil boom, if Gowon had made functional railway available, you know that 
in, in, in every leadership position, there's a template that you will set that it will, one, bring exposure to the people. That when you are coming into government, it will be difficult for you to go below that template. For example, America has a model of development. It will be very difficult for you to go below that template, except if you are going to increase you know, it in terms of convenience for the people. But because the African template from the likes of um, um, Amadou Bello, Yakubu Gowon and all that has been at the lowest low. So it is easy for other leaders, successive leaders, to see being in government as easy. Then the template and the model for development is less to nothing. All right. So let's quickly visit uh, the you know about um, some sanctions that the EU, um, the ECOWAS community, or ECOWAS leadership, has slammed on a Nigerian Republic. Nigeria. One that's seen a suspension of all commercial and financial transactions between ECOWAS member states and Nigerian Republic, freezing of all service transactions, including utility services. Uh, that is light. That is if we used to give Nigeria light now, we'll not give them light again. Abi. That's what that means, right? Okay. Freezing of assets of the Republic of Niger in ECOWAS central banks. Freeze of assets of the Niger state and the state enterprises and parastatals in commercial banks. Quite a number of them, about eight of them, and all of this. And then, most importantly, um, threatening that there may be military intervention if they don't hand over power back to Brazil. What will all this, you know, um, sanction likely portend? And what will also a... If they pull off the threat of the military intervention, what would that what would that pretend? Well, first with the sanction, what the sanction is meant to achieve is to increase the apparent legitimacy of the government in the sense that um, the people as took to the street to rejoice because they believe that the military can bring them the required social, political, economic succum. So now those sanctions are meant to make life unbearable for the country. And when life becomes unbearable for the country, then the citizens will begin to have a change of mind. Oh, we thought, you know, this military guys have good package for us. But after all, our life has been worse. But punishing the citizens doesn't make sense. It's not like, it, it may not affect the military who planned this. Of course, so it won't affect them. It's affecting the common man. Yes, it, it, Does it even make sense? The, the, the thing is that, as it is now, if I'm to connect it with global politics, if ECOWAS, if you impose sanction, can it really affect Niger Republic that much? If you look at their exchange rate, the value of currency there, and if they have backings of nations like Russia, for example, you now look at it that, okay, if you are giving them aid, these Western nations, who wants to reduce your hold on Africa, which is the Western um, nation's hold? Uh, yes. France has withdrawn their aid. Now, and they in turn withdrew, you know, exploitation of uh, uranium. Yes. Before now, those those withdrawal usually affect the country because if France withdraw, no country is willing to help. Mm. But now that Russia is gaining interest in Africa, mm. so if you are not ready to give me. And another person is willing to give me. Mm. Sorry, how does you not giving me affect me? And then, I will and still Russia just, Bukina, Bukina 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 just Bukina announced that cancellation for most you know, African exactly. countries. And Burkina Faso also uh, stops exportation yeah. of another Ukraine Another so thing, another, yes. it's you not know, just Bukina. Yes, another important thing to, to, to look at it is, if you look at the um, incursion of China into Africa, whereby China tries to penetrate Africa through aid, loans, provision of infrastructure. Now, there is this... Cold War, if you can call it that, between China and the United States, whose ally are the U.S., the France. Now, if you look at the policies of and, international and China relations, towards now, Russia. China will want to protect their interest in Africa because they have investment and they have this, you know, interest. And to China, to Russia, anything that will limit. Western penetration, the influence of US, UK, um, Canada, and all these countries in Africa, they would naturally support it because the the um, the um, enemy of your enemies, my friend, or you know, mm -hmm. how did they say it? Mm -hmm. So if France is saying we're going to impose sanctions, and don't forget that these people. 
China has given them what we can call a bit of open high because France, for example, has just been exploiting these African nations whereby they have to deposit a percentage of their national wealth mm. in France. Mm. You know, but China will come in and say, oh, we can build like a new airport for you, you know, based on, you know, um, a favorable condition. But it's still for selfish and interest. For yes, for selfish interest. Country. Yes. But the, the thing is that China is coming up with another model of penetration, which is penetrating the continent through development. But the Western interests have been keeping their hold on the development by exploiting the system. So and the natural resources. yes. So the West, the um, African leaders, and some of the population begin to have interest in China because China is using money rather than taking money from Africa. China is bringing in money and you know creating um, development infrastructure. So if you now look at that, if France is saying we don't have interest we are going to impose sanctions in terms of aid and loans don't forget that even if you ban importation of foodstuff to niger what if china russia and don't forget that china also is not standing alone it has nations that are aligning with it also in the west that feel stifled by the overburden over domination the i i am multitude of uk in europe and the United States in the um, um, American continent as well. Now, how does this, to, to move to your um, second question, if I get the quality, mm. how does it affect Nigeria? You see, yes. Nigeria has to be very careful. Because I told you before that we have about five or six border states in the Nigerian be, Republic. Now, it will affect, and then we have about, you know, quite a number of uh, refugees yes. from, from banditry and all of that. Exactly. About 350,000 in, in... And in, now, if you now look at... Africa, um, Niger is closer to Libya. It has porous borders. These porous borders, that means, despite the fact that Niger is still a country standing on its own, some of those weapons have found its way into Nigerian borders through the porous borders that we have with Niger and other, you know, West African nations. Now, the implication of that is if Niger is no longer standing to have like a functional police functional system to check me some of these things it's just like you want to um, import something into Benin republic and it is to pass through nigeria if nigeria has a functional police you know um, road safety immigration and all that it is believed that some of those things will not have easy access because they would have passed through some scrutiny checks in nigeria but if niger falls that means the weapons, some of those weapons from Libya mm. will be having, you know, almost direct access into Nigeria. Considering how porous our Yes, border. considering how porous our borders. And don't forget that in Nigeria, we still have Boko Haram, armed Bandits. Bandit. Bandit. <laughs> we have militants in the Niger Delta. We have kidnappers, you know, dominating the South. Now, we also have the prevalence of cultists who likes to have light weapons mm. which they see as a means of soft power so if you now look at it this the um the stand of niger as a sovereign nation is of great interest to nigeria now how will niger stand is it by invading niger do we even have the capacity do we not have no we don't i mean not, not, no, we don't. About the third, i mean we, we don't we are, we are about and the strongest military in no, africa we don't, because if strongest. we look at the capacity of our military from 10 years till now nigerian military first were trained to you know um based on coup orientation not to fight all these you know terrorism and all that nigeria doesn't have that problem so is that why we've been unsuccessful with the terrorism largely, but, but we were successful largely, with ECOMOG. for example our judges, when they give some, some some funny judgment, these judges are not trained to handle electoral cases. Democracy came in 1999, and we, we don't have any judges that specialize in you know electoral law reforms and all that. And you do not. It is these same judges that have been handling industrial issues, family issues. Then we use politics to put them in political cases, and they just judge the way you know they like. So if 
we have lost our military men and we have less than maybe 500,000 military population for a nation of 200 million. And if you look at the expanse of Nigeria, if we divide it by 36 states, how many military might per state? Now, if you are now going to create a war in Niger, do you have and the And our military? president is the president of yes. ECOWAS. So the military the strength. Shots. Now, for want of time, let me also touch on the financial capacity. You see, in Considering ECOWAS... The fact that we are going... We have economic crisis exactly. in the country right In now. Africa, it's Nigeria that funds ECOWAS the most. If you look at most West African states, they are quite poor. And they tend to kind of like, you know, take the back seat when it comes to leadership position in Ecuador, that's why you would see that somebody that is coming to the meeting for the first time, President Tinumbu, uh -huh. for the first time that you've never attended the meeting, you know, that is strange. And he's going there for the first time and you just made it the chairman. Just like that. You think people that are there, you think they are not power oriented? You think they are fools? They have interest in power too, mm. but they know the implication. So they push some of these things to Nigeria. And if the war starts in Niger, Nigeria will be the one to fund the war the most. You have not come insecurity in your own country. People are being killed just um, some days ago, is it in Zamfara or something? Don't, don't that, they, do we even have that capacity? We, do don't, we, have, have, capacity we don't have right the capacity. Are you, are you sure you're not just undermining our military? Anyway? I'm not undermining our military. Okay, so, 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 Dr. Deji, we let, don't let, have let, the capacity. So, 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 Dr. Deji, this, this we have not increased minimum, minimum wage. wage. We don't Labor have infrastructure. Do you know how much it costs to fight a war? And don't think that the bomb will only land in Niger alone. Remember that you share border with this country. It's just like how many it's of just like Russia. Like yes, it's just like Russia, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Now, Ukraine may have suffered the fatality the most, but Russia itself is also experiencing some fatality because some bombs are landing there too. Mm -hmm. So, if bomb land in Zamfara that is sharing border with Niger, do you have the humanitarian capacity when even that Niger that you want to go and invade? Is housing about 300,000. So what I expect is for the president to be rational with his decision and look at the we own first. Have lots of look at, yes, look at look at Nigeria first. If it is Buari that is there, you know he has this, you know, over passionate, you know, over affiliation with DJ. Mm. I don't trust him. I believe by now. Bari would have assembled him in the military because he has close relationship with the leadership there. And mm -hmm. that is why I said, oh, if you if guys inconvenience him too much, he will go to Niger. Now, Niger is a hot so, bed. So he can't go there Dr. because Dr. the military Dr. there. Are the you military seeing there. a current president somehow willing to go into war with Niger? Somehow, as the Based on his capacity as the ECOWAS chairman. chairman. Well, it depends on the kind of advisors that he has. And the military in Niger are not fools. What is Algeria, happening in Niger Burkina, now? Faso, Mali, yes. what, is, support. what is happening in Niger now? You ask yourself, as a student of politics, that why now? Niger knows the affiliation that their leaders have with Buhari. Mm -hmm. They know the, about this bromance. Mm -hmm. Why is it that? Buari left office not quite long. Hmm. And why is it that it didn't happen when he yes, was in they now institute the coup. What is happening in Niger now that did not happen six months ago, hmm. four months ago, three months ago, when Buari was still the president? And Buari is easily predictable. In the sense that if this coup had happened in Niger, the military in Niger knows that instantly will Buari react. will most likely react because he sees Niger as his second home. Because how will you say is everywhere in Nigeria as does everywhere in Nigeria have a rail line mm. that you say they should go and be building one rail line to Marathi, mm -hmm. you know? So, so and the donating so, so, bus, do we have bus SUVs. where people are being trekked at all SUVs. in your own country, you know, ahead, you know, and you are donating <laughs> SUVs. So, so Dr. Deji, let's, let's take it back to that problem that we're okay. talking about, right? So how did we get to this point where in, a, in Africa, I don't like to use what I'm about to use, but let me say, this is what people are saying. How did we get to the point in Africa where people are now complaining that it looks like we have a, some part of the worst of us 
being in charge of the best of us. Now, see, in a case study of what the ministerial screening that is happening, you saw a situation where a, senate, a sitting, sitting senator is a uh, rep member is, you know, saying that he can enter primary school at, 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 at age three. Yeah. You made and it. then someone else said, "Oh, I, 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 I have two credits. Just that I did not, um, I did not bring I the other bring credits, my other and, and the rest of them." So we keep having all of this kind of things, and and it's as if we're just making a mockery of ourselves in front of the international a, world. A PhD, so a yes. So, so I want to ask: Is it possible as a Nigerian to graduate, go to school, have an admission in the university with just two credits? Oh. In any part of this country. Well, is it um, possible? I hope this your table is standing well because you want me to break this table. No, don't break it. <laughs> please, please take it easy. <laughs> well, the thing is, as an academic, what we have is this national criteria. Hmm. Though discretion to admit is based on um, the, um, should I say, the discretion of the university. But that doesn't mean that a university would apply its discretion in a very terrible manner. For example, the university. Doctor, Doctor Deji, you're going to tell what? us now, yes or no? This is just a simple calm question. Down, calm down. He's going well, Don't go yes or no. Is it possible in any part rushing. of the country for Doctor, someone I, I, to go to university for and graduate no, to put it with two credits? No, it's only. not possible. I would not even if it's maths and English, it's which not is possible. very compulsory. And then he also right? makes claim to the fact that and he's also boosting he's for also... whatever course you're about to undertake. Seriously. So you're also boasting of the fact that he can actually be Nigeria's president with those results. Hmm. Um, uh, do you okay. see it happening? You that's know, you know, you, uh, you ask me a question, you also drag me into Nigerian presidency. But and that's, if I that's, to, that's is part of what no, the person said. If I try said. to answer both, you know, yeah, um, no, at least, you know, okay, it takes some time. You. Let me withdraw. But the back thing is, if you look at it, now, the end of one thing marks the beginning of another thing. Okay. In other words, if you are yet to finish something, it is assumed that you are not eligible to start another thing. What do I mean by that? If you do not have five credits. That means that you have not earned or you have not proven your worth that you can cope with the ordinary level system. In other words, you are not deemed to be able to gain admission into the university. That means you're not what, qualified enough. Yes, what the university... Yes, what the you univers say you never qualified you to never go qualified. take it. Okay, what okay. the university can do in terms of discretion, is if you have the five credit, in terms of um, um, entry level requirement, in terms of jam, mm. for example, it's not everybody that's a graduate today that wrote jam, mm. though I entered with jam, you know, but okay. it's not, yes, right. it, yes, we have direct entry, we have this, you know, part time, premium, you know. You're going to say you pass through all those systems well. <laughs> you know? We have all these programs that the, the university mainly use as a source of generating revenue because they know that, okay, we'll pick maybe 100 as direct entry, but they may admit like maybe 2,000 or 25. And yeah. they know that majority of you will fail because if you, don't, if you can't pass jam, you can't pass here. So it, it, it will only benefit the, the, the few. By so doing, the university will now use their discretion to put you, if you pass the diploma, to put you in direct entry or 100 level, as the case may be, if you do prelim. Mm -hmm. But the five credit is what shows that you are eligible to move to the tertiary education level. Mm -hmm. So in other words, mm -hmm. it is an unwaverable requirement. The five credit is like when you enter university, all these university course. GNS and all that. They don't you waive it. Do it. It's a university course. So, you must so, pass so, it. so you're saying that so, 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 so I know yes. of some universities in Nigeria, in some parts of the country, that will say that even if you don't have that five basic credits at entry level, before you graduate, make sure that your five credits is complete. Right. That's their requirement there. Mm. And most, but this one is someone who has gone through this school, that, no, graduated. That, oh, that, 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 back in the days, maybe it's not anymore, but back in the days, there, there were there are particular regions of the country. Regions, where that, of the regions of the country. of the country where that is obtainable. Okay. Don't let me talk. Okay. Uh -huh. You know that. No, it is talk, obtainable. Talk. No. No, so, in the north. In the north. No, Dr. I, Deji. No, I witnessed it Dr. in Dr. Deji. Deji. Well, I sat in Kanu. No, I did my NYC in Kanu. So you already know the one that does it. It happens. We have a different education criteria in the south 
and in the north. My sister, if you can have criminal code and penal code, I think that answers you. Uh, in the same country. Uh, you know? All right, Lagos. Because I want to be using bullet points <laughs> for a lot of time. Because our accurate timekeeper. We start holding me now, so let me just use bullet points. All right, let us hold lines open. Let's let you come into the conversation. 0700 903 903 903. That's a direct line to call us with. But if you're watching from the diaspora and you like to chime in on this conversation and you like to call our WhatsApp line, you know, so you don't waste your credit, eh? It's 0700 903 9039. 0700 903 9039. So, back to that question again. Should we now be more worried? about leadership issues in africa well, we understanding should, that with all of this scenario should, that is going on we should be worried about the future of africa in its entirety because if you look at it politically leadership um, um economically socially you know values when i was young there are some values that are inherent in the society that are eroding now politically this money politics and I have asserted that the kind of politics that we play, whereby it is money-based, if we are not careful, in the next years, maybe 10, 20 years, Nigerian leadership, if we are not careful, will either be in the hands of maybe one Yahoo boy or one Froster, the likes of Fosh Poppy and all that. Why? How we an intellectual Somebody that has lived his life modestly all through his life have money to win an election. When it is not based on ideas, it is largely monetarily based. What will happen if you are opportune to have an intellectual is that intellectual will be sponsored by somebody that has an illegitimate means of income and that person will now be the godfather to the intellectual. So in other words, if you are asking for intellectual the, and those People with shady characters cannot employ. They will form that intellectual and begin to dictate how that intellectual will rule you. So, Dr. So, Zinji, yeah. is it not time as a country to kind of review our constitution as regards the electoral uh, uh, um, uh, uh, in elections, whereby you have pre what is the meaning uh, the lowest qualification for anybody who wants to contest an election? So let's uh -huh. say as a president or a governor, a senator, uh -huh. all level. You understand, but you have people. Sorry, is a, sorry, apologies. It's not all level. Just attend primary school. school. Living. Make make the school school make you just say you show face for school. But, 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 but why is it one time we review that? So it's, why so, is someone with just a first school living rule people who have PhDs like you? And yes, then, and then, then why do we make it like you know a compulsory requirement for if you want to get a job in a government establishment, your entry level has to be university degree no entry level is first school living in okay so uh, uh level one level uh, two yeah. okay so so okay so okay. i don't i don't you know um i didn't want to use media so that you ladies won't roast me so let me use the banking sector for example if you want to get a job in a bank you need to have a degree you need to go and pass ICANN. Right. you do maybe first screening second screening and all that you need to it's not it's just not it's not just bank. dr deji as i am now i cannot get a job i didn't get a job in radio nigeria where i worked for about 18 19 years with school sites i did not you know the, you need a bachelor's degree to get a job in nigeria and, and do you know what that means for and me because a senator who has just two credits do you know what a, 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 a minister or mini who has just two credits and what, what happens with that is that I started I started work or I started basically started working in they, Nigeria while, while, while I was still a why student. Why are they so, asking for those qualifications? It is believed that those qualifications has imbibed some inherent skills in you for you to So why can we not trans... That is why... So, so why can we not also not do the same thing to, 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 to our leaders? And appointments okay. too. Good. Well, let, let me pick call Dr. Digi because okay. people, my phone lines have been buzzing. Lagos 0700 903 903 903 0700 903 9039. So I have quite a couple of reactions on YouTube, but I'll get back to them and also have WhatsApp messages. But let's just take your calls first. Hello, good evening to you. Good evening, Bishop. Uh, Dr. Digi, I greet you. Good evening, my brother. And uh, the other woman, I greet you. Promise. The other man, I greet you too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're bound with Biodu, you're welcome. Go ahead, Biodu. I'm sorry about Dr. Tiji, but my advice to Nigerian government is just leave ECOWAS at their usual growth. We have more than enough problems here. Insecurity here in Nigeria is first class. 
You can't even tap on it. How many ministries do we have? That most of them is It's not employed. We have a lot of economic problems. What about? It's not even easy. Some of them balance is very expensive. How much are going to work? We should just leave them. We have our own problem. That's just for that. Thank and number you. two, I think yes, it's true. The worst of worst as government of the cat and uh, during uh, uh, the last government, Buhari uh, and uh, Oshibaji. Oshibaji was is a professor of law under Buhari. Buhari that, but you know, you know, it's not like that. He doesn't know much, but he has to like. Uh, although Oshibaji needed to bow to Buhari for this. So in fact, he just made the country. He just he messed up everything. The law court. He just and I was only a, a professor of law for so one of our. Wouldn't he have advised the body on how to do things? But he, in fact, the body was the head. Whatever he wanted, whatever he wanted, the police would do. Yes, it's all of them. So the worst of all of those government so bad. I just, I just think it's country. And so we continue like that. There is no solution to our problem, Abi. Thank you, thank you. Apparently, you don't have an answer to that. I appreciate you. Thank you. Hello. Good evening to you. Hello. Very good evening. Thank Precious. You. Yes, please. Good evening. Good evening. Promise. Good, good evening, evening doctor. You're welcome, sir. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Ishia. I'm calling from Madrid, Spain. You're welcome. Go ahead. Uh, please, uh, thank you so much for the job well done. You guys are doing. Thank you. Uh, make Nigeria not try for any intervention of military. It's on Nigeria. Nigeria will be... our, our, our president mm. is the chairman. <laughs> I know. I know. But, we'll, but we have the lion chair. I know what I'm saying. Okay. You know? I understand. Let, let Nigeria don't try that because Nigeria will be but let me just know you Somalia. Nigeria don't have a security. Nigeria is a worst in Africa in security level. I put you with authority. Nigeria don't have a security. Any country can come to Nigeria and become a Nigeria. It's not like that to other countries. Even this Niger have a security more than Nigeria. Thank you so much. Mm. And God bless us. Oh, that is not thing that you're telling us, thank you. you. Just came and finish our table, break it, and you're going. But, but is it true? That one word you I said know what that anybody saying. can come and become a citizen of Nigeria and go. Hey, yes, we have the authority, yes. Dr. Right. Well, right, thank well, you, well, thank, um, you. Um, thank you. Thank I, you. I, I won't fault what he said because um, some of the people claiming, for example, some years ago, um, there's this, um, um, I went to see a friend and the cleaner there is from, um, I think maybe Sri Alone or something. And he's in Nigeria. But this guy has a Nigerian, Who's a Nigerian passport. passport. <laughs> right? You know? So the kind of civil service we have is all man for himself. Go to airport now. Go to the airport. I, I think when I've seen that promise. I've when seen the plane it to lands. police that has, that they have voted, that has a voter's card. When a plane lands today, across the world, you see immigration, they are particular about your psychology, hmm. your orientation, your body language. Are you under pressure? They want to kind of like read you. Hmm. These are experts, hmm. well trained. But Nigerian immigration. Dr. Deji, we don't want to go into hmm. that. Uh, immigration. The way they will be looking. Our airports, our airports and our immigration. Like, Let's as go as to the Oh, yeah, our phone no. lines. Because, no. okay. Like what? <laughs> Wasting mango. They will be looking for who to exploit. And you begin to wonder, sorry, let me just give you one experience. I was to board a plane one day and the final check whether you have to remove your belt and mm. all that. Mm. There's this Chinese man in front of me. And this Nigerian official was telling the man that, uh, what do you have for me? I felt ashamed. Okay. <laughs> and I was about to kind of like tackle the man. But then I'm like, ah. If I give this man, if I if I tackle him and say, don't do that, and I give him something from my own pocket, it's not that thing that he needs, but it is customary to him. Immediately I'm leaving. If another person comes, he will definitely build that person too. I felt very sad because you are projecting that. Imagine maybe I'm landing in the okay. Netherlands now. And a Netherlands immigration official is telling me, what do you what have, have for do, me? These guys let's go want back to sir. kill you with screening. <laughs> Dr. They want to let's, take let's you to every available like machine me. to scan you just because so you are in Nigeria. That is not a leadership issue. So, it is our fault as, so, as so when, okay, now, 
based on our salary, Mr. Digilez, which immigration official can afford iPhone? Know, so they don't like iPhone. Mm -hmm. How many immigration official can afford oh. holiday in Dubai? So, Hello, good evening. So they don't like to go to Dubai. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Yes. Apologies, please. Good evening. Yes. yes. yes Welcome. Sir. What's your name, please? Where are you yes, calling sir. from? Yes. Uh, uh, you are yes, there. He didn't answer the question you asked. What's that question he didn't answer? Yet? You ask, you ask why our leaders are not like to responsible to his people and do no, things right. That, no. But would you would make his people happy. He never did answer you that question. So I think uh, Western world. They are not the problem of our, this Nigeria. Because if they are the problem, our refinery in those days will not be functioned at all. Mm. They are not the problem. So our problem lies on ourselves, chasing ourselves from uh, state by state, by town to town. This one is this, this one is that. That is our problem, to humiliate others and uh, you stand and uh, resurrect yourself as a, a citizen. That is the problem we are facing. So you think yeah. it's ethnicity that yeah. is basically, or, you know, ethnic affiliation that is basically a problem? Hello? You're saying that ethnic affiliation yeah. is basically our problem. Yes. And that's why we've, we've refused yes. to develop. Yes, yes. It's one of the problems. So that has been the it's clog in the wheel of our development. World. Yes, it's all Western world. I think if you are in your house, you decide what you can do for your children. In, likewise, if as well, uh, uh, the, the nation that sovereignty nation, like Nigeria, hmm. we're supposed to decide what is good for us. Then we do it. Rather, we will be chasing uh, ourselves. But this one is this. this All right, I appreciate that. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, I appreciate you. Yes. Mm. So uh, that is the problem. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So, Dr. Thank Digital, there was much. something someone said. Before I go to my WhatsApp, I, we have tons of messages. I hope that we can even attend to them. So, there was something someone said in one of those videos I made you watch. And the person said that one of the major reasons of this, you know, incessant leadership issues and coup d'etat, intern coup d'etats in Africa is, you know, you have African leaders who gets wealth in very questionable ways and brandish this wealth in front of the citizens while you, you live in so much affluence while your people that you're leave, leading live in penury and it's not as if your policies are even you know is making their life better your policies won't better their lives in any way so why would you not have people top of their government that takes me to something that happened i think early this year where there was an exclusive we heard there was an allegedly exclusive letter by the military or some section of the military of nigeria yeah, you know I mean? to yes okay. to then president muhammad buhari and i think by extension the president elect then bola Metinubu, where they said that you know that letter revealed if that letter were to be true or correct from what we read revealed a lot of corruption in the military a lot in fact accused service chiefs that letter did accuse service chiefs of buying refurbished equipment in place of new ones or in the name of new ones and, you know, how you practically send us to war with something that is not worth it. So, if we go by all of this, do you see our military? And in fact, they said a lot. So, even mentioned how, you know, they keep the best of them or the, you know, the sacred cows to be in the offices and send the other ones to war. You know, a lot. That, that, that was a big reveal. It's not me that said it. It's, it's out there. You can go dig it up. And, you know, with all of this kind of thing, coupled with what's happening, do you see that zeal for you know, most African ECOWAS country soldiers to want him back in this kind of war if the ECO ECOWAS um, um, officials call for that? Well, the thing is, um, if the ECOWAS official calls for that, for example, if Nigeria, the president is pushed to invade Niger, of course, Niger will respond. Naturally. And Niger will not only respond, it's West African allies, Guinea, you know, Burkina Chad and all that, Burkina Faso, Faso Mali. Mali has already said, Mali, Algeria, Mali, Burkina Faso would, said they will support. They would respond. Hmm. And that will now transmute into the global stage, just like Russia uh -huh. and Ukraine. Uh -huh. The, 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 the Russia-Ukraine war is indirectly 
a war between the West and, and Russia. Oh, yeah, lots Russia, of people. The president of Eritrea said that. Russia is a, trying to, yes. you know, um, Russia is trying to reestablish its hold, at least to start from its region. Mm. And Russia, unfortunately, is trying to play the big brother instead of playing like, okay, we are mates. Mm. It's trying to play the Lord over other smaller nations. Now, those nations haven't been exposed to Western ideas are now trying to say, no, you can't lord over us. And Russia is now trying to say, do not take this step of aligning with the West. So indirectly, because Russia, if you are to use the military might of Ukraine alone, the resources in Ukraine, I'm sure Russia will be able to finish Ukraine Some completely kind of within five days also. or one week. Power yes, Russia if there's and no the West. if there's no Western support, mm. that but, but, but just we that is why during the days of Donald Trump, the the um, conversation between the Ukraine president when um, the, the the Donald Trump was asking the Ukraine president to induct in that um, the son of Biden, I can't remember his name now, you know, um, this Biden popular Jr. son, mm -hmm. you know, that he should indict him. And the U.S. legislature first impeached Donald Trump for that, that he's using um, Ukraine's vulnerability to seek personal interest, which is a strong offense mm. in U.S. leadership. So there's this um, Western alliance which has brought itself into Africa. So what you will see is Niger planning a coup. But you will not see the end of Esau that this Russia, this China are also trying to limit Western old on Africa because Africa is the only vulnerable continent now. And so, Africa is where the resources are. So, Dr. DJ, Dr. DJ, that brings me to the concern that we have. Now, understanding how vulnerable you've just said that Africa is and understanding the different interests. You just mentioned different interests, China, um, Russia, and the West in, and I mean, in, in West Africa. And understanding how long this play play, um, what do they call it? Russia, Ukraine war has lasted. Something that we didn't think would last this long. And whether we like it or not, that's one of the major re you know, reasons for the economic crisis mm. the world is facing right now, right? Do you think it's a wise decision for the ECOWAS community? To want to go into any, instead any of, issue. Instead of the ECOWAS community to want to go into war, the ECOWAS leaders under ECOWAS and across Africa should first purge themselves of corruption, mm. of trying to perpetuate themselves in power. I mean, the president of uh, insatiable, Biden has of insatiable tests for ECOWAS wealth. chairman to make sure you know, democracy is returned in Niger. To make you, sure it returns. So how is, it, is that you, going to happen? You see, it is... Um, it is globally alleged especially by the Bretton Woods institutions that democracy is the best All right. um, access to development because power would evolve from the people mm. and you are subject to the wish of okay. the people but that has not happened in Africa so there has been question that what do we do to African democracy since it's not bringing the desired uh, development all right all right let's go back to the phone like Zena, good evening Hello, good evening, Precious and Promise Thank and you. Doc. Hi, um, Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Good evening. Please remind us your name, where you're calling yeah. from. Uh, my name is Chooks. I'm calling from UK. Chooks, you're welcome. Go ahead. Uh, you. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, speaking about uh, what's happening in the uh, Nigerian Republic, mm. uh, it kind of shows how far Nigeria has fallen. Mm. You know, I can still remember one of Obasanjo's letters or his memoirs. Well, Basan just said that um, there was a time where America couldn't do anything in Ameri in Africa without notifying Nigeria about it. At least they will inform Nigeria about going on this operation here. You remember when there was something like this in South Tome and Principe? Obasan went back with the president of South Tome and they reinstated him back. Remember in the Gambia, when the um, military guy was trying to take over, re remain in power when he lost the election, Nigeria just flew um, two fighter jets over his presidential palace and he immediately vacated office. I think the guy's name is Jamal. Um, but the, the point is that, you know, Jamal. we can't, Nigeria has fallen so far off and we don't even realize it. As in Nigeria, I say, they whine me. We don't fall. So even this, uh, this administration, if Tinibu by mistake, 
say he's going into Nite, that's the end of his administration because Nigeria already is at war within itself. You have, do you know that you have Nigerians living as in IDP camps in mm. the Nigeria Republic? You have Nigerians living in IDP camp in the Nigerian Republic. So, what is this administration for Tinubu to even be taking the leadership of ECOWAS? He should have toned it down. You have told them, "Sorry, I can't take this leadership. I have home. I have homework to do." You know. But we are the, we look are at what the giant happened. of Africa now, Chooks. Which, which giant? We are the rats of Africa. Let us stop deceiving ourselves that we are called. Is okay that what now? we are? Honorable. Mm-hmm. Well, it's okay. You are going. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah, it's okay. Let no, somebody else go. No. Go, precious, go, go. Precious, I'm, precious, I'm not going. You are calling yourself giant of Africa. Somebody is becoming minister. And he has a two, two mm-hmm. credits. And you, your, senate, your senate is there. All those cacophony guys are there, smiling at and approving and, and, and endorsing. And you, you remember there was someone among the senatorial um, nominees that was that, that we hear that was accused of you know indicted of something by God. Exactly. That was not that Sarati. was not supposed to be <laughs> for ten years. Oh, oh yeah, come on, I told you me. to become a big going no, now. No, bye bye, my brother. I'm not going. No, I'm not going. Now. I'm going. Pick this another ball. This ball. <laughs> my brother, I don't want to marry precious. So, both of you can just, you know. Bye bye. Thank you so much. I appreciate mm-hmm. you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, goodness me. All right, let me run through some WhatsApp messages because there are lots of them. And those people will just come and para for me now and say, What's going on here? I don't want to read our messages. All right, so this here says, uh, Good evening, P Square. As long as we have this our uh, so called contaminated democracy there is no way military coup will not be back in west african region precious african leaders are living large at the expense of uh, the masses i didn't even read this message before i asked you that question trampled on rules of law and disobeyed court orders use election rigging to get to power when then uh, then what is the difference between military government and these contaminated democracies that they practice we are practicing okay so what is what is happening in Niger is food for thought for the rest of africa sam from a good sense in that message as sam or good evening um a government has given us a definitive agenda with timeline to revive the economy in nigeria i don't know where this impatience and intolerance will take due to the selfish ambition of some immo- uh, immature uh on that all right and um alex from iju now says in addition to what your guest is saying about the relationship between africa leaders and western powers they will always try and foist leaders they can blackmail and control what the cia american government did to uh patrice lumumba of congo lumumba, yeah. uh congo dr uh because of the natural resources in that country made me to forever hate the americans and other western powers gaddafi uh, libya of libya is also a recent example let us Ukuma, learn okay. that's what he said and then this says uh uche uh which is he's watching from heaven pmp your guest is saying the truth uh he said uh the colonial masters didn't want to give africans freedom you see it was struggle to give africans freedom and they are still holding africans captive with their selfish ideas dividing brothers with their deceptive ideas that's that is why uh they didn't release uh me uh Mm, okay bye from heaven okay <laughs> so this says good evening guys as for me the western education and the quality of the version we use here in nigeria is is partly the reason of our docility and the leadership uh pushes the bar lower by not giving quality education if this continues amongst this generation promise eh, we will not be able to avoid more agitations and crime in the midst of poverty and corruption promise huh? beg them for us <laughs> they say you should beg them mm-hmm. i like doing as eh? as I, I like doing as as eh? like 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 he's serious <laughs> students and this is precious your guest has spoken very well this night talking about the coup in republic of niger it's uh, and its effects do you realize that the coup was far more peaceful than the last presidential election in nigeria <laughs> hmm. that, how that, many people that died within that coup whoa he said yes ECOWAS is threatening military action intervention isn't it laughable ah god free from surrey calm down really nobody re- people really did die during the coup we have so many people die during our election whoa whoa okay i didn't think of it that that way but the Anything thing is do people cases? die apart from leaders and military officers do Innocent citizens died during coup. Uh, uh, ah. Wait. Uh, from Agigena says, ah. if I was the president of Nigeria in this current situation, what I would have done are 
first and foremost wage absolute war against corruption at all levels. This is because in the presence of corruption, nothing will work. And then he said, reduce cost of governance, cut down on the salaries or fringe benefits of the political official holders. Eh? People oh. are saying that their, their money is not even enough for them already. Open the border temporarily to curb hunger and scarcity. Fight insecurity with my last drop of sweat. Eh? Make buses available for low prices to ease transportation. Reduce the cost of electricity, cooking gas. Put in my best to revive some refineries across the country. I think this applause uh, would have followed if applause would have followed if uh, the president did this. And then this says, "Good evening." All this uh, you see from okay. So this is you see from Ijegu. He says, "Neo colonialism is a problem of Africa." Africa will progress once our leaders stand on their feet without support of former colonialists. That's what you're saying. And then something now says from Ian Akwaja says, may God help us in this country. Oh, I never see where an almighty government cannot curb economic sabotage perpetrated by some cabals, but always bullying the common citizens. Also, imagine with the legislators calling screening. Oh, hey, see what's in their calling screen. The ministers of renewed hope. Okay, oh, that's what you said. And then... Um, I take further messages. It says, Precious. Ah, this message is so long. Sorry for my mouth now. Okay. He said, You are the one who screamed, arguing that you weren't a reflection of the leaders. Now you're saying otherwise. Calm down now. It's pinning me. <laughs> <laughs> so you used to say, lot of not I will not. To me, leaders. I am not yeah. a reflection of our leaders. Me, I will not agree. And he says, A lot of Nigerians have skills and potentials of corruption with looting abilities. The only issue is the opportunity to get into a position of governance, which they view as an office filled with cakes and cheese, as it is in the eyes of criminal mindset rats. Hell. He said, uh, then again, Dr. DJ, some people who I call the short-sighted and naive are of the submission that it is welcome development to embrace Russia into Africa as some African countries cool and kick out the West. Is this not waving a wolf by while uh, waving a wolf by while welcoming a hyena in your home? <laughs> Looking at the antecedent of Russia and Putin, which uh, with his autocratic, uh, <laughs> emperorish dictator and evil tendency, is this not a foolish to welcome a pretender to fill in the space, uh, filling the space of the Africa, of the Americans of, of Africa? Is that not another slave master in disguise? That's what he's asking. That question. And then this says, uh, a time will come when illiterate touts will be Nigerian's president. But God forbid, uh, the way this uh, crop of politicians are going, if not stopped, they will do unbelievable things. Please, Precious, tell your president not to interfere in the Niger problem. Although I know he is uncomfortable because of... Uh, uh, okay, Senator from Isola. Uh, uh. All right. Then he says, "Have you guys forgotten that precious brother Sari Dokobo said that <laughs> <laughs> said that he'll be on a president one day?" Eh. He actually said that. Eh. All right. Remy from Akoka then says, eh, "We we are all in this country before the election when APC presidential candidate said to everyone that the statistics we we go not statistics we go job. I suppose intellectuals applauded him in a world where data is the new currency. We we are all." Here, when Akwabio and Lawal were reinstated by the judiciary, even though we saw that they did not contest for primaries. Till now, no one can categorically name the secondary school the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria graduated from. His university certificate questionable. And we expect system that allows all these abnormalities to uh, do things rightly overnight. Hell no, I can't give what, okay, you can't give what you don't have, Remy. From a cocker sent in that message and precious promise i love your i love your ever objective unbiased analysis analyst dr dg he's always on point i am sure the ministerial nominee will claim that if a president can get away with making five credit passes why will a senator be stopped for uh such defi uh, deficits what's your country for you that's your country for you tony annie sent in that message <laughs> Venomous, venomous. Let me quickly go through your message and I go. Uh, let promise take the messages from YouTube. African leaders are jailers, not leaders. The numbers of reasonable persons in the country, Nigeria, is limited. I fact-checked it based on my own assessment. Most people in Nigeria see suffering as a normal way of life. God forbid, that's not true. Could you imagine a grown-up woman saying something has to go bad before people can enjoy? The political leaders of Nigeria are, have succeeded 
in this act of daylight robbery, looting of treasury since um, we gained democracy. I am so sorry. Uh, I sorry you for Nigeria. You're singing. Oh, right. All right, I promise. Ah, too many messages. What do you so go many through messages. Some, some WhatsApp Let messages? Let me just speak some YouTube. messages. Yes, Stop so. Lostling says, DG, you too much. Oh, God bless you. Man. And Udolisa Franklin said, Precious, for me, on Niger saga or crisis of soldiers taking over power. Uh, you said you support it 100%. Okay. And um, Obi Nayana just said, Have you guys forgotten that Precious Brother Said of Ubo said? <laughs> okay, this is another okay. this is another shade here. Yeah? Okay. You guys <laughs> like your brother said he's well going done. to be a president one day. And Tony Chikudi said, Good evening, beautiful, precious, and good promise. Promising promise. Huh? You are doing good. My greetings to your guests. Who well, greet it to Mr. Tony Chukudi. Do we have a call? Let's go. Back okay. To All right. Uh, yes, we do have a call, but let me just quickly run through these two messages. Yinka from Ifakoija says military intervention in Nigeria Republic could be the terminal to ECOWAS region and Nigeria in particular. Even all ECOWAS countries like Mali and Burkina Faso are not even in support of military intervention because of its ripple effect. Nigeria in particular because of our closeness and ethnic similarities with Niger Republic. This will compound our security problems because you can hardly differentiate a, Ni a Nigerian from a Nigerian in the north and our borders are so in here. Mm. Oh, right. That's what Yinka said. And then this person then says, um, Ulu from Badagri says, Precious, your guests failed to answer the question about leaders being whom we are because I agree with you. Instead of guests uh, he said you guess that i'm mentioning go on name to avoid your question precious everybody must share in the failure of this society if truly we are really sincere with ourselves your guests make me remember my mom who always say to me that it's easy to use mouth to turn vegetable on the fire <laughs> this is what your guest is doing in the studio today i can understand why my mom said that ah, ah, that's what they oh yeah shots fired at you let me let me let you Response. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> okay, let me give you right to response. Well, the thing is, um, Nigeria situation, political economy situation. The question you asked me made me kind of like trace it back to where Nigeria got it wrong. And where I think Nigeria got it wrong is during the days of um, um, retired General Yakubu Gowon, when we had oil boom, and Nigeria was experiencing some stability, then we have this um, Biafra civil war and all that. So this period, if you go into international um, policies or international development, you see that this was the period that Nations like Nigeria were making serious advancement in their policies, laws, and all that. So I think Nigeria, after the um, coup, began to get it right with that oil boom, whereby we transform from an agriculture. It was also during the Gowon era that we transform from an agricultural based economy to an oil based economy. You know, so um, we can't exonerate the past to what we have now. And once you set that leadership standard, it will be difficult to deviate from it. But if I can say something, at regards um, this um, ECOWAS invasion of Niger, hmm. you see, Nigerians can be categorized um, under one of the two or both, which is a weak state or a failed state. We state in the sense that if you look at all that concerns Nigeria, all that anything that you can connect Nigeria with, they are all either ineffective or ineffectual or dysfunctional. If you look at the military, the police strength, you know, um, uh, our um, armed strength in terms of um, firepower, if you look at our health system, education system, it's either they are ineffective, ineffectual or dysfunctional. So that makes Nigeria like um, a weak state and a state whereby the impact of government is not felt on the citizenry. That is a failed state. So if Nigeria can be categorized under weak or failed state or both, and you have a president 
that right now there is this um 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 local dissatisfaction among the populace based on government policies and all that you know this removal of subsidy without permitting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and life is difficult for the citizen if you have that in place and you now go to invade another country what does that bring for you what that brings a for country you that is, is that, that is housing some of your is that, refugees is, is that now you know um you've gone outside to look for trouble and the people at home are not in tune when with you, you. Who do you have run the, to? when you barely have the resources for this. yeah no who do you even run to for example putin is still the president of russia because there's this he has been able to kind of there's this local you know satisfaction and there's no much agitation by his people there's his no people much agitation anyway, by so, people because mm. he's been able to resonate with the people and there are some form of convenience that he's providing this is the wrong time if the president would hear that you should not go or dare try to invade don't believe in maybe you are strong or you know or you think that oh you have the military power and strength no if you do it those countries now they are not one they are five and the rest four apart from niger they would think that if you easy if you can overrun niger easily your next target will be them you command them that go and return to democratic government. So they will also be so prepared they to fight will back. do everything within their power to protect Niger, mm. so right. that you don't fall back on them. All right. So and you, you don't have the resources, and even your citizens are not happy with you at the moment based on the hardship in the country, mm. and you want to go and invade another country when your citizens are they themselves are not happy with you. So who do you run to at the end of the day? And it is too early for which what nigerians face under the Buhari government nigerian problem you never solve and reach half you never even start you know labor is trying to strike asu is warming up you know health workers you know and all that um you know all these associations all right okay Talk and you want to go and you are planning to invade another country with mm -hmm. this military that they never even solve all these our banditry kidnapping <laughs> Boko Haram and all that all no, right. Did you be that? Okay. All right. Uh, so, Levine is from Egypt. Ah, your message is so lengthy. I'm sorry. I would not be able to take it. Say good evening, we need precious. To, we need to step down. Nigeria is a country set up uh, for exploitation. British made you talk plenty. God bless you, Levine. Let me just just tell you that God will bless you for what you said. And he says, Double P, the president decides to go to war with Niger. Precious, I promise you. <laughs> you promise me, precious. Yeah. Before the returns, Nigerian army must have cool deter from from their own parts uh, casey from um casey from plateau state uh, from plate casey from plates eh what's that sent in that they say okay that before they return from that um, um fight that they would have had their own coup d'etat to oust the president that's what he's trying to say and then uh very quickly he says uh Tinubu is trying to fight another man's fight my hand no deal who leave her from uh yenipaja sent in that and then very quickly he says uh good evening pp are you not aware that your president said i know that you people didn't vote for me and can you imagine that eh, really and then this says uh precious um even if ECOWAS invades niger republic it will be war without end there are many nigerians in uh, nigerians in nigeria armed forces for you okay oh there are many nigerians in nigerian armed forces that is people from Niger Republic ah, in Nigeria's armed forces. Out. Are you that, serious? No, we I can't rule it out. Make them they play. Alex from Niger said, hey, uh -huh. all right. Okay, well. And then he says, this uh, United States and other Western nations through the United Nations are pushing the ECOWAS to apply military aggression on Niger Republic. The United States, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, France, Ireland, Canada, and Australia allow public funds stolen from Africa to be hidden in their countries. And are condemning coup in Nigeria and Niger Republic. They don't mean well for Africa countries. I am Adele here from first time. <laughs> me, I've been saying, me, I've been talking about that same thing too. If these people mean business, tell our people not to be coming with your wealth. And then this says, Good evening, precious. My greetings to Dr. DJ. This is um, AY from Mushi. He said, May God bless Dr. DJ. I defeal you guys. He defeal us. Eh? All right. So, uh, Lagos, very quickly, thank you so much for this conversation. Let's go straight down to our. Uh, a step down segment dr dj when we come back from this break we'll look at our step down conversation so a certain man in Katsina state nigeria 
divorces his 14-year-old wife. Guess why? Because the 14-year-old wife allowed a male doctor to attend to her while she was pregnant. That's a nice topic. I'll All right. To That's our step down conversation, Lagos. Let's take a quick break. I'll be right back to, you know, dissect this matter. How a 14-year-old young lady will now be um, no longer married because she let a doctor that is male what attend is, to her. What is a 14-year-old? How many female year gynecologists do we even have in Nigeria again? We're coming back What later. is a 14-year-old doing in marriage? Pressures. Best of all, she's been school. Sound <laughs> informed guests across various sectors that discuss matters arising on hot topic parts. What was the rate of inflation and then what was the exchange rate? Intense conversations. Critical analysis. What is wrong with those 200 million people? We can't even give ourselves. We sometimes disagree. When we say our GDP, it's not an oil dominated. To agree. On Hot Topic Pali, Monday to Friday, 6 15 pm to 9 pm, 90.3. Voice of the People FM. Lagos. Now you have a voice. He's whining <laughs> us like this, and he's whining us. Hey, that, hey. All right, so welcome back. This is the step down segment. Twenty minutes at two, seven o'clock, and let's forget about all the problems of the world. No war is not coming. We're not intervening anything. Eh? No military intervention yet. You're so, not the president. I, I am not the co-host chairman <laughs> either. So, so in our, on a step down conversation this evening, Doctor Digi, let me read this story to you. So, um, a man in Casina State has reportedly divorced his fourteen-year-old wife. She's only fourteen years old, and you know that in that part of the world underaged marriages you know a thing right and then um the reason is for because she allowed a male medical practitioner to attend to her while she was giving birth to his own baby at 14 she was giving birth to his baby well i, I didn't make up the stories in a punch newspaper so you can read it out Katstina State, Katstina, the former okay. president no, state. Good. No, let me finish the okay. story. Sorry. Eh? So the executive director, Nana Women and Girls Initiative, Dr. Fatima Adamu, disclosed just last week Tuesday, just this Tuesday, you know, last yeah, this Tuesday, day before yesterday, said that the teenage mother, uh, last week Tuesday, yeah, that the teenage mother had a complicated, last week Thursday, rather, had a complicated childbirth. As a result, she was rushed to the hospital where there was no female medical practitioner on ground to attend to her. <laughs> so the only male medical practitioner available attended to her during her labor successfully and she successfully delivered her baby now when the husband rushed to the hospital and realized that the medical practitioner that attended to his wife during labor was a male he became angry and subsequently divorced her thank god see the doctor their life adamu appealed to government especially states government to ensure there was equity in the recruitment of deployment of medical personnel to rural communities a 14 year old fulani girl in casina state delivered and had difficulty with delivery so we had to take her to the hospital and after the delivery the husband divorced her because she was attended to by a man the young girl was divorced all because she was attended to by a man during delivery oh dr Digi, let me let you respond before i answer the one i want to answer okay well, the thing is, in northern Nigeria, I, um, by the grace of God, did my NYC years back in Kano State. Mm. And that's one of the benefits of NYC because that's the only major experience I have of the north. And for you to stay one year there, there's no way you won't understand their cultural orientation and all that. So that's one of the benefits I can say for the existence of NYC. Now, they have this culture that... You have to marry 
early. That's their belief. Maybe 10, 12, 14. If you are maybe 18, 20, you are already whole. A certain senator married with 13. For example, one of my friends who comes from the north and we're both, you know, schooling overseas that time. So um, he now showed me a picture of his wife. And I said, ah, your wife even young self. And he said, ah, eh, I let Marie say this one even self too old. Ah. That was his response. I was shocked because the lady is relatively young. But he's telling me that the girl self too old. Oh, wow. You know, so it is like what is really like in it's the, the south. Norm. It's the norm. There. In the south, mm. also upon a time, your definition of being a man is how many wives you have. Okay, so you Dr. Know? Deji, let me, let me quickly take you on so, that, please. Yeah. Uh, so if it is a norm that girls are married very early. In terms of marriage. In like, terms of marriage, right? Which I don't I, subscribe to. No, anyway. it's okay. It's okay. Even if you subscribe to it, it's, it's fine. It's, no, I like it right. It's not. It's now a thing. I like ripe fruit. It's okay, Kwano. Miss Doctor Deji. It's okay, Kwano. No, let me tell you what I like. It's okay now, Doctor Deji. So the question I want to ask now is, how will they now have female medical doctors who will go to school? If she's giving birth, if she's having children at the age of fourteen, what time will she use and go to school and not study medicine? After taking care of the home front, do you know how long? First of all, most of them that give birth at that age go through a lot of issues. Medical fighting from issues, medical issues, issues, fighting VVF I and all of them because they are quite young. So before they will recoup and recover, they would have been 30, 40. She'd been at that age, now they go come begin go school. VVF that they also blame that is their fault. I know that some of their husbands divorced them because they, they have, have these VVF. issues. Right. Because they begin to they say, Oh, you're leaking, you're doing this and you're doing if that. So if if there is no death of female doctors in that region, why would that lady have been saved by a male doctor? Well, is it not a crime? Is, the thing is, um, to that man, it is sacrilege mm. for he, for another man to see his wife nakedness. Well, there's a bit of religious cultural dimension to it, but well, to in, my in, mind, in, to my in, mind, in other I, in other okay. Islamic countries, is it so too? Because someone was saying that in Saudi Arabia, male doctors attend to female patients. We're talking so, of. A woman that's, in that's a, a, an Islamic country. Of, do you know what woman, labor pain is? Labor that cannot wait for you. We're talking of you know a woman in labor and an emergency. You know, and they say she had complication, meaning that she would have died. And also considering the 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 ratio, the, I mean the mo, uh, maternal mortality rate in mm. Nigeria, so the level at which especially, especially, the, level, especially the rate at which enough. yes, the rate at which women die through pregnancy mm. or through childbirth in Nigeria about that is so years. high. And a fourteen year old was saved by a male doctor, and she's divorced now. To worsen the case, this this fourteen year old is not the only wife right. of this oh. man, right. and I will question the rationality of why one person will be eligible to four things, and another person will be eligible to just one. To my to my mind, now you are a human being. I am a human being. So because I'm a particular gender, I'm entitled to have four things, and because you not by your making Dr. Deji, your, your question, that, then you are entitled to one thing that is here. that is what well i think i think i think religion did not make it compulsory that oh if you don't marry for you are going to hell no i don't think so i don't want to be philosophical so it is, but i'll say let is me give religion you an not even man-made let me give you an example of is one of my not man -made? this we were abroad studying this man has what i can call a good wife in the true sense of the word. We live together. And he's still bent on having another one. And, and I told him that, ah, Edmond, why will you do this for God's sake? You have a good wife. Your religion does not say you must. Mm. It is you that have this covetousness, greed, ojuko koro. Because what else are you looking for in a woman that is already giving you peace of mind? Long story short, Edmond go spend money for another Okweke, Okweke chopping money. Now their story end. 
What do you have to gain in that? All right, so Lagos, let's open the phone lines. We'd like you to chime in on this. 0700 903 903 903 0700 903 These are the numbers to call. 0700 903 903 0700 903 So what would you rather this young lady should do now? First of all, she has a child that she has to attend to. Before your call comes in, I okay. want to share um, one experience I have in the north. During my NYC days, so um, people are to come to the local government. I served in Gwale local government at Galadenchi in Kano State. Now, people were to come for registration, and I was participating in the exercise. You cannot touch like a female just by the hand to kind of like place their hand correctly. So a woman whose husband is a judge, you know, all this rich, you know, um, I was like, she came with her children and she wasn't doing her hand properly. And I was about to hold her and to kind of like, you know, um, um, help her, help her to, 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 to kind of like, um, adjust it. So I now remembered the culture. And so, so I held back. Mm -hmm. The woman now smiled and said, go ahead. You know, the reason why she said to me is from her look, when you it's see fitted. people from that side that are that have this orientation and they have this exposure, you see them by their dressing, their appearance. You see that okay, this one have this level of you know exposure, and maybe she sees me as the age mate of her son. Mm. But naturally, if it were to be a young girl, and I just hold her hand or just hug her, if news filtered into this the you know you, the community that I have hugged the the husband or the fiancé of that lady will be looking at me as if I'm not worthy to leave. So that is, you know, the, the, the kind of uh, like um, cultural, you know, kind of thing that has existed in some part of the North. Though okay. I don't think it is right because if you love a woman, you still watch her to Okay, so, so my concern really is if these young girls are married so early, as I said again, how will they now go to school? To study medicine. Probably after giving birth. Well, I don't, I don't maybe have... Maybe after, after childbearing, maybe I, 10 years later. I don't have anything to say to, to that because school. you've made the point. There will be little or no qualified female doctors if these Take girls are impregnated at young age. Mm. Motherhood is not an easy task. Now, to not think of it that when you have the orientation that you must burn as many as possible, so immediately the woman is recovering from one. Maybe the child is, you know, one year old. You know, um, another one coming. Uh, yeah, I wish people at home can see promise and <laughs> wish you made that and you know say you ah. you you sow the seed again. You know. <laughs> All right, let us zero seven hundred nine zero three nine zero three nine zero three. Hello, good evening to you. Hello, good evening. Yes, you're welcome. Good evening. Go ahead. Let's hear you. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is. Lawrence, I'm calling from my job. I'm a first time caller. All right. Welcome to Welcome, 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 giving the bail. Yes. We're giving you the bail. Um, oh, welcome. Go ahead, Lawrence. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. You're welcome. Yeah. I've, been, I've been listening carefully to the topic. Hmm. I served in the north, you know. Mm -hmm. This is a place that, um, in fact, I lived in the north before and I served there. This is a place you don't from where I served, I served in Sokoto. Mm. You don't hug a lady mm. in public to an extent. Mm. You know, where I was serving, I remember a call member hugging me and the principal called me. He told me, you can't do this. Mm. It's not acceptable. So yeah. even when you're not a Muslim, you can't, you don't have the right to hug anyone in public. Is that what you're saying? Uh, hug. You, you don't even they hold them you on the hand and mm. walk on the street. Mm. You don't go the lady and walk on the street as a guy. There. Yeah. Okay. So, so are you saying that? So, so what do you think will be the fate of this young lady now that was is divorced at the, at the age of fourteen and she's just a nursing mother? What does she do? Um, actually, like her life has just been cut short. School now. She, it would be hard for her to continue school because I mean she has a child to nurse and raise. But what would she have even done? Would she had not allowed the doctor? To attend to her, she's semi-conscious at the time. Perhaps so she would she have, have control. I, I I wouldn't subscribe to her not allowing. In fact, at that time, she's unconscious. Mm. You know, her life matters first before any other thing. That is not the end of life for so her. So, what is the ideal thing that should have been done at that time? I really like to hear since you've served in the north. So, what's the ideal situation? 
in as much as there is no female doctor to attend to her, her life matters. So mm. she should just doctor mm. okay. to attend to her. She should move on with her life. Mm. Uh-huh. The man just divorced her, so she still have her life to live. And I expect NGOs to help this lady, give her scholarship, make a life out of her, as in give her a life. life. The 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 thing is, she cannot say, "Oh, um, for my man not to divorce me, it must be a female doctor." And there is no female doctor, then she will die. Mm. So is she (laughs) actually accepting to die than to accept a male doctor? Life, (laughs) right? So she is a married. And um, continue her life when right. she's healed. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. I think this message here. Okay. Go ahead. When you can hug a lady in the knot and they see it as a crime, that's mm. why I get so angry. Almost at a why? state of madness. When I see all this abuki for for Yaba, where they change money, you see the way they touch some of our girls, the way they you. drag them, they, they the way they you. pull them. Pull your hand. You see, if some of those ladies or some of our people know the, the kind of like maybe so you're saying crime that or can jungle never justice that can in end. North. Oh, you dare not. But why are they doing it here? I, I, I dare not. Why are they doing it here? Go to Shokoto and drag mm. a lady by the hand the way they do but to all this our girl, all this aboki. You know, go against... to Ikeja, go to all this aboki. I know, Dr. Deji, Dr. Deji, if it's You've a sin, you've been changing dollars. Dr. Deji, you've been changing dollars. So if it's a sin, is it not also a sin doing it here? All right, so, so let question. me quickly run through these messages here. This says PMP. Are you sure the casino man is not one uh, bearded Yerima has been married on the rich children? Uh, uh, Zamfara to Cairo. Uh, okay, oh, now so you talk. No, we talk. Um, and, uh, but that's, uh, that's not him. It's a joke. And he says, Good evening. The man uh, that divorced his 14 year old wife over the issue should be a minister. That is the type of persons that we need in governments. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me just take this one call very quickly. Hello, good evening to you. Uh, he was uh, saying that sarcastically. Okay. Hello, good evening. Welcome. Very yes, quickly. What's your name? Where are you calling from? First time, Cora. Welcome, 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 welcome. All right. Go ahead. Your name, where you're calling from? Go go straight ahead. My name is Obina. All right, Obina. From where? Lagos State? Where in Lagos are you calling from? From... Um, all right, go ahead very, very quickly. You have very limited time. Let's hear you. All right. Well, what I have to say is that these foreign people they don't, have, they don't have culture. Yeah, they can marry at any time. Everyone so has culture. Problem. Every tribe has has culture. You can't say they don't have culture. Married early is part of their culture how, how, too, how, you know? How, it's Excuse part of me, their culture. No, 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 you will not say that. How, how we we just want you to contribute. Crying. What do you think the girl should do? Or what would have happened? That's the question we ask. My sister, I don't know, I don't know what to say, but all I know is that I don't have culture. That's all. Right. Yeah, he, he. Let's let you go. All right, Lagos, uh, this is the size of our conversation <laughs> this evening. Dr. DG, one last word, very last, very, very short. Please, let's go. You don't want to say anything. <laughs> Go ahead, well, please. Nigerians, I wish you were. That's all I can say. All right. Okay, so this message says, uh, not only in the North, you can't hold in the public in any Islamic country, and it's not a bad law. Not everyone will subscribe to the uh, work. Uh, marrying underage and marrying earlier are two different things, right? Okay. Mm, we agree with you, but this is not even the case. We're talking about the case of this young lady now. What should become of her life? Now that she's been forced Paying to be for a mother she has at 14 no and a divorcee, mm. for, for something she doesn't have control over, that's actually what we're talking about. Well, uh, this is the size of a package. You know that the show returns your way again tomorrow evening, 7 p.m., right? My name is Precious Inye. On Instagram, I'm at Precious Inye official. Twitter, I'm at Precious underscore Inye. Have yourself an amazing evening. And Lagos, I'm Zini Fab, Z-I-N-N-E-F-A-B on Instagram. And on Facebook, I'm Izzy Newayama. Good night and have an amazing evening. Good night. Ta-ta.